L.A. Law will not be seen this evening because all the lawyers in L.A. are busy fighting with NBC. The lawyers lost. So here's a special Christmas look at the best of Laugh-In. Boy, if there's one time of the year I really hate, it now. Behold the star in the east, which we must follow, O oh fellow wise men. Okay, but first, you guys go ahead and stand over there by those dunes. I want to take a picture of you. It'll make a great Christmas card. Once more, tonight, NBC is going to sock it to you. Look that up in your funkin' wagnalls. Is that dirty? You bet your sweet bippy. I thought so. For those of you poor, unfortunate people watching in black and white, you're missing one of my most beautiful jackets. You know, a lot of people ask me why I talk this way. You see, my, my teeth are white. What is this, a Goodwill Industries program? This isn't really a TV show. It's national group therapy. Tonight, NBC presents Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In Past, Christmas Present, starring Laugh-In's own spirit of Christmas, Dan Rowan, and his partner who's full of Christmas spirits, Dick Martin, and in alphabetical order, Joanne Worley, Ruth Buzzy, Lily Tomlin, Judy Karn, Chelsea Brown, Teresa Graves, and Goldie Hawn, and in no particular order, Artie Johnson. Henry Gibson, Alan Seuss, Dave Madden, Johnny Brown, and others. And me, I'm Gary Owens, appearing as Morgul, the friendly Drell. <laughs> That's for all of you who thought I was just another pretty face. Ladies and gentlemen, the entire voice of Miss Kate Smith. Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In salutes the spirit of Christmas. Uh, it's a great time of the year to do that. Sure is. It'll sure look strange uh, seeing a Christmas show on spring rerun. Well, never mind about that. It's just the whole point. Christmas shouldn't just be in December, but it should be all year long. Wow, we couldn't afford that. Well, now, you see, too many people forget what Christmas spirit is really all about. Oh, tell me about it, won't you? <laughs> I fully intend to. I thought you would. Yes. Now, it all started in a little town in Bethlehem. It all started in a little town in Bethlehem. Little town of Bethlehem. A uh, good name for a song. Yeah, all right. Now, many years ago, the world was troubled with many pressing problems. Well, no wonder they didn't have drip-dry suits then. Now, this is serious, Dick. People were riding in the streets. There was civil disorder, injustice, oppression of minority groups. Well, I'm certainly glad they cleared all that up. Dick, this is serious. Now, what does Christmas mean to you? Christmas means to me many things. Decorating the Christmas tree with popcorn. Oh. Going around the neighborhood singing Christmas carols. Tiny little tots with their face all aglow. Boy, that's beautiful. And that's what Christmas means to you. No, that's what Christmas means to the cuckoo holding my cue card. <laughs> to me, it means... I don't want to hear about it. Well, wait a minute, you asked me. Oh. It means settling up in a front of a fireplace with a nice lady with a stereo playing, sure. waiting for that fat old man with the rosy cheeks to drop in on us. Oh, you're waiting for Santa. No, her old man. Uh, <laughs> Christmas or not, if she isn't in for bed check by 10.30, he comes looking for her. I don't want to hear about it. And he ain't gonna ho, ho, ho either. Uh, all right. <laughs> with that merry look at Dick and his Christmas party, Laughing takes a look at the Christmas spirit. Well, you ask. Well, you ask. <laughs>
There is a Santa Claus. Forget, forget about me, Dick. I'm no good for you. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, hey. hey, man. Long time no see. Yeah. Well, I've been on the road. Yeah, yeah. Been with Kenton, man? No, Guy Lombardo. Lombardo? Yeah. Why aren't you afraid being with Lombardo or cramp your style? No, no, not at all. I fail to see the humor in that. Do you realize I could be home watching Gunsmoke right now? There, there he goes. Charlie on the town. Can't spend one Christmas Eve with your own family. Well. <laughs> Sure, Charlie. Who do you think you are, Bob Hope? Every Christmas I waited for you. <laughs> Tonight, Latin special Christmas present. Never before seen outtakes from the cutting room floor. Are you standing in a foxhole? <laughs> no wonder you lost. <laughs> You should be in the Air Force. <laughs> Blitzen. Laugh-In was a celebration. We had shows to celebrate, not just Christmas and New Year's. Laugh-In itself was a holiday which we celebrated every Monday night at 8. Whole families used to sit down and watch together. When Laugh-In came on the air, it was known as the sexy... Sexy is a good word. Sexy, I'm saying sit, 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 sit. All right. <laughs> when laughing came on the air, it was known as the sexy sixties. <laughs> oh, that's such fun. When laughing came on the air, it was known as the, are you ready? Sexy sixties. <laughs> sixties? What is sixties? Sexy. When laughing came on the air, it was known as what? Everybody. Sexy, sexy. That's right. We had Woodstock, mini skirts, the Beatles, Haight Ashbury, long hair, women's lib beatniks, bra burning, the Vietnam War, drug culture, draft card burning, and protest. We had sayings like "Make love, not war." Don't trust anyone over thirty. America, love it, leave it, or fix it. We had sit-ins, loving, smoking. Then we had, here it comes, laughing. In spite of the fact today is April Fool's Day, the producers of Laugh-In have asked me to announce we will do our regular show. Therefore, we feel that... <laughs> After all, you're probably as sick as I am of practical jokes by now. <laughs> Therefore... The preceding was unrehearsed, uncalled for, and <laughs> moving along musically now. Whenever I feel afraid, I hold my head erect and cry. <laughs> and now on with the show, and here are your favorites and mine, two real nice guys and very good friends, Dick Rowan and Dan Martin. Dick, roll, rolling and Merlin. Here's dumb, dumb Merlin and roll, Roman and Merlin. So let's bring them on. Friends of mine, to Roland and Marvin. Good. Here they are, folks. Look, they're over there. Gotcha. <laughs> For the first time next year, it looks like Dick's late again. I don't... Sounds like he's at the party. Come on, you're all invited. Hey, 
Hey, pale face. What's your biggest holiday? Mm, the day commemorating full equality for my people. What day is that? Tomorrow would be a guess. <laughs> instinct about people is uncanny. Now, take that man over there. Something tells me he's not to be trusted. Which one? The one who's tearing the clothes off the hostess. <laughs> you know, Haight Ashbury always has the Christmas spirit. Oh, yes. Every day of the week, you can see jolly bearded guys on the street holding a little pot and going, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> system in Boston is doing something tasteful about the population explosion. We're teaching sex education, but we're teaching it wrong. What a pity most of the Christmas spirit one finds these days is 90 proof. On the other hand, that man over there is obviously a bigot, a racist, and a hate monger. How can you tell? Well, look at that sign he's carrying. It says, I'm a bigot, a racist, and a hate monger. <laughs> oh, it's one big difference. In America, at the end of the year, the people plan to throw party. In the old country, the people plan to overthrow the party. <laughs> decided that we'd been seeing too much of each other. So, last night we turned off the lights. <laughs> I don't understand the kids today just lying around the house doing nothing. Why don't they go out and get to the unemployment line like everybody else? <laughs> Sin by silence when they should protest makes cowards of men. <laughs> Where'd you get that saying? From some bearded long hair? <laughs> That's right. Abraham Lincoln. Oh, I guess he told me. This year I resolved to stop chasing after every Tom, Dick, and Harry and zero in on Dick. <laughs> Kate, I hope you like the Christmas gift they sent you. Oh, I just love it. It's just what I wanted, Dick. A plastic bippy! <laughs> the star in the east which we must follow oh fellow wise men okay you three guys go ahead and follow that star i hate to travel over the holidays <laughs> one ringy dingy two ringy dingies a oh, gracious good afternoon have i reached the party to whom i am speaking this is miss tomlin of the telephone company have i have i reached a mr Aristotle Onassis? Miss, good, Mr. Nassis? I was wondering personally, what, what does the O stand for? Oh, oh my goodness. You Irishmen certainly do have a way with words. You, you mean your doctor told you to take one tablet before each meal and then a brandy before bedtime? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a week behind on the tablets and a couple of months ahead on the brandy. <laughs> I'm crazy about you. You know, I was walking down the hall here at NBC on the way to my own show when I heard a quarter drop in the studio. And the next thing I know, I'm on camera yelling, sock it to me, sock it to me. <laughs> I still haven't found that quarter. Hello, fellow 
consumers of America, it is my very great pleasure to announce that there will be no socket to me time tonight. We figured what with Christmas coming up and all, most of us are getting it socked to us pretty good already. <laughs> Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. I'm just waiting for someone to try to sock it to me. Now she blows! The socket to me lamp is definitely lit. Hey, I got a great idea. Why not sock it to Joey? Sock it to me, sock it to me, sock it to me, sock it to me, sock it to me. It's my pleasure. Give me socky, give me socky, give me socky, give me socky. Not me, huh, you round eye idiot. <laughs> Mr. Rosmenko, you look great tonight. Why don't you dress like that? Mr. Rosmenko, we have a big surprise for you tonight. I want you to listen very carefully and tell me if you think this voice sounds familiar to you. Mamushka! No, no, that's not your mama. Oh, that is your ex-dancing partner who has just managed to escape from behind the Iron Curtain. He's here tonight, it's Boris Bodolovich. Boris 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 Just like it old days. <laughs> One more time at Conducer. Go by I push none. How does that grab you, sports fan? Being on Laugh-In is kind of like going out for a wild night with Georgie Jessel. You start out expecting a great deal, but then things soon start to drag, and in the end, nothing happens at all. We well, all have the shrimps. Yes, sir. Sorry, shrimp, he wants yours. But first, you'll have some chicken soup. Do you smile to tempt a lover, Mona Lisa? Or is this your way to hide a broken heart? Are you warm? Are you real, Mona Lisa? No. I guess I'm just a cold and lonely, lovely work of art. Kringle. Laughing was like one big, happy, dysfunctional family, just like yours. And that's the truth. We became what was, what is a real family, and I'm, I miss it. It was great to be a guest. You were treated like family. You walked in, everybody was wonderful. When I left laughing, I spent the next few years trying to find that same family again, and of course you couldn't.
year on a bad note. Here's the news. One and the two and <laughs> And here's the man to whom the news wouldn't be the news without the news. Here's Dickie. Hey, you're a wild crowd tonight. Wow. May the good fairy swickle your zillman. Jackson, Mississippi, a spokesman for the Mississippi Teachers Association, currently threatening a statewide teacher's strike, said today, and I quote, all of we teachers are not going back to the classroom until we get paid lots more better. <laughs> Cleveland, Ohio, the National Association of Manufacturers today denied that the pollution of Lake Erie is caused by industrial waste from factories along its shores. They insist the blame be put where it truly belongs on the lake's 800,000 dead fish. <laughs> Take it away, Goldie. And now, looking into the future, all oh, for the news of the future, here is our future, news of the future from our news of the future man. <laughs> Here's our future man, Dan. Oh. oh no, 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 Goldie, don't huh? feel at all distressed. I think you're getting better. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, thanks, Dick. And listen, if you see Dan, will you tell him I just introduced him? Oh, I'll do it. <laughs> California, 1988, 20 years from now. Los Angeles finally succeeded in catching up with New York City today when Mayor Shirley Temple Black officially opened the newly completed L.A. subway system. She was immediately mugged. <laughs> Item 1988, an effort to correct the image of history was made when the remaining American Indians were asked if they had any grievances. Both said no. <laughs> 1988, Washington, D.C. The Warren Commission today handed down its long-awaited second report, clearing up 20 years of doubts and rumors in spite of the fire in the National Archives <laughs> and the mysterious disappearance of Dallas, Texas. <laughs> the... Um, the commission was able to reach a definitive conclusion. The report was entitled, What Assassination? We take you now to Burbank International Airport and Baton Twirling School, high atop a smog bank in beautiful uptown Burbank for the weather. Here's Bippy. That's Flippy, Chelsea. Oh, I'm sorry. Here's Flippy. Much better. We on the air yet? Oh, hello, y'all. Uh, good morning, or whatever, or day. <laughs> today was out of sight, out of sight. Temperature today range from about 56 to where you are to 450. Woo! That's where I am. Uh, throughout the day, we had this, this green, purplish, diagonal thunder that was shooting all around there. Well, y'all should have dug it. <laughs> uh, and yeah, dig y'all. And for tomorrow, tomorrow, you people in Hawaii and Rhode Island and all them other way out places, dig, y'all gonna have a gassy day tomorrow. It's gonna be sunny. It's gonna be blind. It's gonna start with the sun coming up in the east like a big yellow ball. Woo! <laughs> Then, then it's gonna get bigger and bigger, and then they're gonna envelop the whole universe with love. Love, y'all, love. Woo! Well, that's all I'm gonna lay on y'all about the weather today. If you're going away this weekend, you know, have a good trip. Woo! And now the report on today's smog level. Hi, Big Al here. Be 
you're at. A few words to our oodles and oodles of boar hunting fans. I'll never understand why you go out year after year struggling through the brush, tearing your stockings and getting all upset looking for a boar when you can find one at any cocktail party. This item, 1989, 20 years from now. At last it happened. There was peace in the world today. Not a shot fired, not a threat, not an unhappy sound. Today, at last, there was peace in the world. Unfortunately, only lasted a few seconds while everybody reloaded. <laughs> well, that's it for the news for tonight. It is? Yeah. Why, did I forget something? Oh, well, what'd you forget? Well, I didn't think I forgot anything. You sounded like you wanted to add something. Oh, I did. Okay. Don't forget to do your Christmas shopping early this year. <laughs> very helpful. He certainly is. This is Dan Rowan in drag, and this is Dick Martin in decent. Say goodnight, Dick. Good night, Dick. Okay. Oh, where's Dick's shoulder? Is that your shoulder, Dick? I got it. Okay. 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 When, when you hear the music, you'll tell me. in the east, which we must follow, fellow wise men. Okay, you three guys go ahead and follow that star. I'm going to spend Christmas Eve with my family. <laughs> Only 34,239 commercials until Christmas. Mistletoe. Ma'am, <laughs> what would you do if you were in an airplane and the wings caught fire and the engines fell off and you were losing altitude? Listen, I just... If only when we used to shoot the shows, I wish that the cameras were running on what was going on on the sides and behind and, and around, and everybody kind of egging everybody on, and people playing pranks, and we'd be behind the joke wall, and somebody would, you know, stick their, you know, foot in your mouth, or or somebody would make a rude noise, or, I mean, you know, they play a prank, that's right, well, they, were, they were like the merry pranksters. Johnny, if you woke up one morning and discovered that I was your wife, would you smother me with diamonds? I'd use anything I could get my hands on. <laughs> you hit that kid again and somebody's going to answer to me. And now, folks, let's rejoin the Green Hornet and his faithful servant, Tonto. <laughs> it's time to spotlight the stars of tomorrow today, Laugh-In's new talent time. We got to do something about them. I think somebody did. Hey, got a surprise for you tonight. Forget it. Oh, no, no. Uh, oh, again with a, a surprise, lo huh? Lovely surprise. Uh, One of our own kids. Are you kidding? Yeah, Joanne Worley. Oh, I love Yeah? Her. Come on, Joanne. Oh, yo. Oh, what are you going to do, honey? I'm going to do a musical number oh, for I you. Oh, I love it. Love it, love it. Mr. Maestro, please. Oh, Mr. Maestro. <laughs>
Gentlemen's Discovery of the Week. Ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous Brothers Lagarde. Gentlemen, we're certainly honored to have with us tonight the world champion Hungarian goat caller. Would you give us a demonstration of your Hungarian goat calling prowess? <clears throat> hey, you Hungarian goats, I'm calling you. <laughs> Every year, the same problem. Who do you get for Howard Hughes? Behold the star in the east, which we must follow, O fellow wise men. Okay, you three guys go ahead, and I'll follow along later in the station wagon. Miss Deller, I frankly do not find your hairdo particularly tasteful. Hmm. Who told you to chew it? You know what I'm so thrilled. The thing is, when remember when uh, first of all I saw you when you did that when you were the uh, when you when you mastered. You know you have the thing is you have so you're such a first of all you're so versatile. You do so many. You can yes, right. you dance. You can you're fantastic. You see a million cell. It's, it's you you have you have so much. You are just a person that just you have. You know, when you you exude. You know you have that so much. You know, you, when you say you know di, you know you say hey di, you know dig the you know dig the and you do like this and you make then you say and right and right on you know uh, 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 you know when you say right on. And all that. It's so And you have Alta Beast. She's so beautiful. She's, she's, she's a fantastic. She's a wonderful, just a beautiful looking. It's, and you have, you just have, you have vitality. You have a, you have a, a life for a thing that just comes, that just comes out. It's so wonderful. I'm on top of it being newly married. I, I don't know how you find the, find the energy. <laughs> Okay, ready? <laughs> I am so afraid of well, this. Isn't that terrible? Uh, yeah, just, no. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. ready? Yeah. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> One question. When it drops out, when yeah, this thing drops out, yeah. do you go down real fast or is it almost like you're just jumping? Just so almost like, like you're just jumping. jumping. It's just like you're jumping. Yeah. Okay, ready? <laughs> Funny, he doesn't look cubish. Oh. 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 made the network very nervous because they felt it might have a negative connotation since all of the other sit-in events had been in the nature of a protest. We were protesting everything. We were protesting against the right, the left, the middle. We were against intolerance and incompetence. This meant we were opposed to the Ku Klux Klan and the government. Time for me to bridle my faithful reindeer, climb aboard my trusty sleigh, and spread joy and happiness throughout the world. Ah, oh, fine, Sand. On your way out, would you take the garbage? <laughs> this is your offstage announcer, reminding you that this is your offstage announcer. Uh, last year, the Women's Liberation Group and the Gay Liberation Front tried to solve their differences, only to find out there were none. <laughs> What can a girl do about bad breath? Keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Running bear. Me, hunting bear. Me, baby bear. <laughs> Whiskey. Frozen daiquiri. Colorado River Rapids, voting in number 304. When canoeing down the da dangerous menace in Colorado River Rapids, if you look up and see a boat, you're drowning. 
evening. You know, Dennis, you're a bright-looking fellow. Oh, thank you, Phil. But you should understand the importance of doing visual comedy. Oh, I should. Visual is very funny. Now, visual is... Now, you take this board. Got a board. You see a man walking by carrying a board. You get interested. Phil, what, Phil? All right, well, Dennis. Visual comedy, the old one. The old one. Oh. <laughs> you can't help people. I'm trying to. I know. Yeah, well, it was brilliant. Did you like it? I really did. Okay. Thanks an awful lot, Bill. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Oh, one question, Bill. Yeah. <laughs> I think of it. Yeah, oh, uh, you know I was wrong about the whole thing? What? I shouldn't have turned around. Seven nail in there. No, no. Okay. If you bleed, we may get more laughs. You're right. Let's put a nail in there. If we rehearse. Now look. Okay. You look a little shaky to me. Waiter! Waiter? Yeah, I want the... <laughs> Comedy, we wouldn't have missed you like that. You know what they would do? What? They would give it to you. Get a laugh. Not me. I don't get What you just learned was a lesson in visual comedy. Now take the board and practice. <laughs> oh, I'd like a complete course of Arthur Murray two step lessons and a six foot blonde Adonis with bad eyes. <laughs> Settle for a little elf. Goodies. I've never tackled a girl in my life. What are you, some kind of pervert? <laughs> I happen to be a complete home heterosexual. <laughs> always doing Tamil jokes, and the censors went berserk. The censors hated camel jokes because camels had humps, and you weren't allowed to say hump on television. In the 60s, we were much more innocent. One time, Judy's wig fell off, and she said that she'd never been bald on television before. The censors thought we were making fun of people with no hair. We were, we were just having a good time. We weren't really aware of the social and political impact the show was having. I mean, I dare say even I said things I'd never say now. Okay, boys. I definitely had more thighs and less consciousness. Wanna make them happy? Forget about the skates and buy. We even make a pair of handcuffs in case they're causing too much fun. We're beating up the gang, they're like a boomerang, the same as all of us. The same as all of us. Where's Santa? Nice, neat finish. I guess it's time to say goodnight, Dick. Good night, Dick. Good night, Mr. Dick, and good night, Mr. Dan. Sayonara, Dick. Good night, Dick. Good night, Ducky. I prefer Dick. Who's Dick? I wonder if you'd yeah. mind if I told you what my aunt said when she was trapped in a sleeping bag with 14 unemployed Swiss bell ringers. You mean your aunt was actually trapped in a sleeping bag with 14 unemployed Swiss bell ringers? I didn't know that. Well, she must have said something. You bet your sweet bippy. <laughs> Say goodnight, Dick. Good night, Dick. You mean they actually get last with this kind of stuff? <laughs> now, 
it is the Christmas season. It'd be very charitable of you not to interrupt. This has been our Christmas show, and I'm even... I'm not going to interrupt you. I just thought perhaps, uh, on the off chance, you might like to hear yeah, what my, my aunt, aunt had to say. Had to say. Yeah. Yes. No, was, she she was, was in another terrible situation, I suppose. Disastrous. Oh, my word. Tell me about it, won't you? Well, you see, she was a uh, chimney sweep. She was a chimney sweep? Your aunt was. So was my aunt. No kidding. What happened to this chimney sweeping aunt? Well, she and Santa Claus got hopelessly wedged. One Christmas Eve uh, in a chimney. In a chimney. In I chimney. suppose that could happen. And she was there a long time. And what, and what did she say? Uh, I thought perhaps what uh, she said when she came out. <laughs> I already asked you. What did she say? Oh, well, if you're ever hopelessly wedged yeah. in a chimney on a Christmas Eve yeah. with Santa Claus, yes. and it looks like the two of you mm. are going to be wedged there a long time, yes. just sing. Oh, I can't wait to hear it. Have yourself fun. <laughs> no, that's what the show needs, more sentiment. <laughs> Say goodnight, Dick. Goodnight, Dick. Goodnight. Knock, knock. Who's there? Nanu. Nanu who? Nanu Blomer has spoken with the event of the court. You know, I hired this fantastic housekeeper. She cooks, cleans. Hey, she's here now. Anyway. If you want to, if you want to wake up in the morning with a smile on your face, go to bed at night with a coat hanger in your mouth. You know Humpty Dumpty had a great fall? Yeah, but he had a lousy summer. <laughs> Yes. You've been abroad. Where's the American section in Paris? Well, the first ten rows of the Follies Berger. Oh. Yeah, and I've only been abroad in some like it hot. Oh, you did? Hey, Goldie. <laughs> can you name the basic unit of electrical power? What? Right. <laughs> more about mental health, I think I'll go crazy. Jack, Jack. I got a friend. Yeah. <laughs> who crossed a sheep. Let me start it again. I've got a friend who crossed the sheep with a porcupine. Yes. He doesn't know what he's got, but if it knits it, no, I won't say it. I shot the arrow into the air. It fell to earth, I'll know not where. The furnace is filling the car. So the furnace is in your turn is loop, Lord. If Milton Burrow was playing a Scotsman and Will Chamberlain borrowed his costume, he'd be a. Thank you. But a man with a banana in his ear does not want you to notice his feet. A funny thing happened to me on the way to Burbank. This is it. I had a fun weekend. You know what I did? I hijacked a Cuban plane and then I took the pilot back to my place. Dan, move your neck so you know you're on. <laughs> Go to your room, will you, dummy? <laughs> you have just seen is true.
Only the writers will be changed to protect the innocents. Would you believe Sony and Cher? That's what's known as a plug, huh, Alan? No, this is a plug. First you put your two knees down, I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. I eat so my spinach, I fight to the finish. I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. This show was pre-recorded so we could mail out our apologies in advance. Very interesting. And don't forget to tune in July 4th for our Christmas show. Good night, Lucy. And Merry Christmas to you, Matt Dillon, and the Avenger, and all of you lovely people in Peyton Place. Everybody loves somebody sometimes. Be happy. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.